talk about trumpet high notes, trumpet lessons, and trumpet mouthpieces. Now, a lot of people think that if you can play high, it's because you're playing on a shallow mouthpiece. In fact, a lot of people that are unable to play high, when they hear someone play high, will say that they're using a, a cheater mouthpiece or a shallow mouthpiece to be able to get those notes. That's not necessarily so. There's the right tool for the job. So what I wanted to point out today, I want to dispel a couple of myths. Um, I do happen to play on a shallower mouthpiece. It is a Neil Sander 17S. Um, but is this the only reason why I'm able to play high? Is it the only reason why other trumpet players who are um, quite adept in the upper register of the trumpet, their mouthpiece, is it, is it the only reason why they can play high? I don't think so. I think that you have to practice the right techniques in the right way for the right amount of time to be able to get your upper register the way you want it. Now, I wanted to go through a couple of mouthpieces that are quite common. Uh, let's pull out, this is the Bach one and a half C. And I'll see if I can get it up there in the, in the camera for you. So you know that I'm really showing you the real deal. Uh, probably can't really see it. Let's see if I can turn it a little bit. There we go. Take my word for it. That's a Bach 1.5C. Yeah, it's a little bit cold. Now, according to a lot of people who can't play high, I shouldn't be able to hit a double C on this one. Now, I will tell you that the mouthpiece I play on, I play on it for a reason. I like the sound I get, I like the tone, I like the accuracy, I like the volume I get out of it. Uh, otherwise, I could just play on any mouthpiece, right? So this one here will probably not sound as good to me and have the projection and some of the other qualities that I love in my Neil Sanders, but will I be able to play a double C on this one like I do on mine? If the people who can't play high that put out this myth that, that um, you can only play high with a cheater mouthpiece are right, then I should not be able to play much maybe beyond the high C on this one. So let's find out. This is a Bach uh, one and a quarter, I'm sorry, Bach one and a half C. Now I'll just play a middle C here. No problems there. Does seem a little bit harder than mine. Whoa, wait a minute. That was a double C. It was on a Bach one and a half C mouthpiece. Well, it looks like I just broke that myth that you have to be able to use a cheater mouthpiece to be able to play high. Now there's a lot of people that play on this one, a lot of symphonic players um, that uh, poo poo high notes. So they play on this one. Uh, they don't really have to play much more than a high C or a high D in their symphonic and orchestral works, even the professional trumpet players I'm talking about in major symphony orchestras. This is one of their favorite mouthpieces right here. Um, would I use this on a regular job or a gig for um, playing Maynard stuff, um, playing lead? No, I wouldn't, because um, this makes life more difficult. But, you heard it right here, folks. I played a double C on this Bach one and a half mouthpiece. Let's see if I can show you it again. Well, before I put this one away, I got a couple other ones to show you. Let me put you. Let me put it right back in. This is the Bach one and a half C mouthpiece. I'll put it right back in my horn. Let's just see if that was a fluke. Maybe it's a one-time fluke, and I won't be able to get it again. No, if it wasn't a fluke, I am able to play high on a Bach one and a half mouthpiece. Let's set that one aside. Now, what is the most common trumpet mouthpiece in all the world? If you answered a 7C, you are correct. I'm going to see what happens when we get out the 7C. Now watch this video carefully because this is all uncut. There's the 7C. Can everybody see it? I'm going to leave it in the video. I'm coming back around. 
Coming back around, there's no cutting or editing. Here's the box 7C. This is what you get typically when you buy a new horn. Typically what beginners play on it. Very few professionals play on a 7C. There might be one out of a thousand that would play on a 7C. Well, let me try it. Now, supposedly, um, I shouldn't be able to play on high on this one either, right? It's a 7C mouthpiece, not a cheater mouthpiece, not a lead mouthpiece. Let's see what happens. Now, if you watch the video, I've been going on continuously, there's, so there's been no monkey business. It's still in my horn. on this 7C mouthpiece. Shouldn't be able to do that, should I? According to the people who can't play high and who use typically the larger mouthpieces, I shouldn't be able to play high on that, should I? Okay, so I played on a Bach 1.5C, played a double C. I played on a Bach 7C, played a double C. <laughs> Let's get out just a couple more. This one here this is the Bach 10.5C. Now this is the mouthpiece that a lot of classical players uh, who really can't play high will, will actually use in their piccolo. Let's see if I can show it to you. Sorry. It's not coming in clear. There you go. You can see it's there. That's the Bach 10.5C. I'll leave it in the frame so you can see me put it right on my horn. This is the one that a lot of classical players, professional, principal, symphonic players all across the country, the major metropolitan um, symphony orchestras will pop this in when they got to play something high or they'll put it in their piccolo and then they go back to their one and a half C. They'll put the box two and a half C in. It's cold. Let me warm it up. Middle C. High C. Double C. I'm going to pull right on my horn. You saw exactly what I was playing on. This is no trick photography here. It's a Bach 10 and a half C. Well, what is this? This is a Bach 12. Bach 12 C. We'll try that one. I've actually never played on a 12 C before. I borrowed a couple of these mouthpieces just for this demonstration. About 12C, I have no idea how I'd play this one. It is probably a little bit more smaller than the 10 and a half C, I'm guessing. what I'm going to get on this thing. You can see it's a huge, huge, deep, 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 deep cup. French horn mouthpiece. What, what is it here? It's 11. It's a Vincent Bach 11. French horn mouthpiece. So I still have it here. Let me put it in my horn. Of course you know it won't fit properly. But it's in there. Let's just see what I give this. It's not going to sound pretty. It's going to be out of tune probably swim around. But it's a French horn mouthpiece. Um, I really shouldn't be able to play too high on it. Most French horn players can't play too high, so let's see what will happen. Definitely a different tone. A lot warmer. High C now. Real muffled. It's probably going to be very difficult to get the double C out. You heard it right there. Got a double C on a French horn mouthpiece in my trumpet. So, let's go back to my mouthpiece. Neil Sanders 17S. There you go, you can kind of see it there. There we go. Neil Sanders. You can tell it's beat up. This is the very mouthpiece that I played Gabriel, Gabriel Maynard Ferguson's Gabriel on. Uh, quite a number of years ago. So if you happen to see my video doing that one, um, 
or hear it somewhere. This is the same mouthpiece I used for that one. Now let's go back. You're going to notice that I can, of course, still play the high note. It's just going to have more of a punch, more power. That's your middle C. Here's your high C. Love it, love it the way it comes out. You notice that all in all these mouthpieces, I was able to hit the double C. All of us have different dental structure, different facial features up here, and therefore what, what works for somebody, for example, this works for me, might not work for you. And that's why I would definitely recommend, and I recommend all my students to spend some time going through different mouthpieces and making sure that mouthpiece is uh, appropriate for what you do. This mouthpiece may not be the perfect mouthpiece for a symphonic player, but it shouldn't be the reason a symphonic player would say that they can't play high because they need a cheater mouthpiece. I've just broken that myth right here. You heard me play a double C on a Bach one and a half mouthpiece. You've heard me play, uh, that's a one and a half C mouthpiece. You heard me play a double C on a Bach seven C mouthpiece. That's the standard mouthpiece that every little kid gets uh, when they take their horn right out of the case for the first time. So what can we learn from this? You, first of all, need to be taking lessons from someone like myself or some you got to take lessons from somebody who already can do what you want to do. That's number one. Number two, put the notion of mouthpieces allowing you to play high out of your head and actually do the real trumpet work. What does that mean? You actually got to practice. And you got to practice the right stuff in the right amounts. That's what we learned today. You don't need a cheater mouthpiece to play high. You should be able to play high on any mouthpiece you pick up. I just proved it here. You know, I want you to go to TrumpetSizzle.com. That's www.TrumpetSizzle.com. I have an array of uh, trumpet video lessons. Um, my main job is teaching trumpet from beginners all the way up to advanced and professionals. Yes, I do have a couple of professionals from time to time that come in that want to learn how to improve their range. Always remember, it takes about 5,000 hours of concentrated practice from beginning whether you started in fifth grade or if you're starting as an adult, doesn't matter, log those hours in. It takes about 5,000 hours just to reach the very bottom of the professional caliber trumpet player. So if you're wondering where you're at or why you're not where you want to be, think about how many hours you've logged in since you began playing. And if it's not 5,000, chances are you need to put in some more practice time. And I'll repeat it again, you got to get with the right teacher. In fact, let me just bring that up before we close it. You know, if you go to Google and you type in trumpet lessons, you're going to see uh, quite a variety of people on there, including myself. I come on page two right now, I'm trying to get on page one. But you want to get with a trumpet instructor who not only can tell you how to play high, show you how to play high, but actually has been out there in front of an audience with different bands playing. Uh, upper register trumpet music. Anyway, what I've noticed is that a lot of these trumpet players that you know, you're going to find that pop up on Google on page one right away, uh, if you try to search their name and find out what they've done, what they played, um, some of them you can't even find a live video of them playing. But their, their marketing is really good. So I would just caution you that as you're looking for someone to help you out with your uh, trumpet lessons and improving high range and everything else, you want to get with somebody who can actually play the trumpet, play the way you want to play, and has actually proved it with bands and other live audiences. Go to TrumpetSizzle.com. See you there.